Seder Studio Vlog number uh, <laughs> number number one. <laughs> few songs on the album that Soup and I wrote in person together at my house, just like in my room. Basically the first rhythm of the song, melodically and everything, I basically hummed out to Soup because I don't know how to play guitar. And um, we wrote the rest of the song around that in pretty much one day and then kind of messed with some stuff later and then tabbed it all out in Guitar Pro and added some stuff here and there. It's another like kind of bouncy, rhythmic, almost like the type of rhythm that it is is similar to like almost a metalcore or progressive metal band, but I think the tone of the guitar and the melodic aspects of it really aren't super heavy. And like a lot of the newer songs on the album are a lot more rhythmic because I've had a lot more to do with the writing, but this song specifically, the main riff is more of kind of a chuggy, bouncy rhythm. I come from a much more metal or progressive metal background than post-hardcore, or more than anything. It's all pretty much progressive metal stuff, so I definitely wanted to add in like staccato rhythms that I love from bands like Meshuggah and stuff, and the crazier tangent parts that are similar to like Dillinger Escape Plan. Uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> you just set my fucking <laughs> wall! <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Brody. Bye, Brody. Bye, Brody. Bye, Brody. Bye, Brody. Gesturing knowledge to see survival. This song was another song that I ended up changing a good bit from the original guitar profile. It started out with just the main chorus of the riff that shows up in the beginning, and the chorus comes back, and I added a pretty crazy staccato breakdown kind of progressive tangent thing towards the end, writing it. And tap, transcribing all my parts was one thing, but when I sat down to learn it, it was by far the hardest song on the album. This was one of the first songs that was written for the new album after I had joined. I messed with one of the rhythms in it, or one of the riffs in it, and like kind of just changed the overall time signature in it to where it like switches to where the stack or the ride is on the upbeat. Overall, it's probably one of the more simple songs while still having a lot of energy and changing up stuff pretty consistently throughout. A few days before recording the song, I added a cool linear fill, and it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> For this song specifically, I added a significant amount of parts compared to the others. The main riff from the beginning of the song was a pretty old riff actually. Then I repeated a few of the chorus twice and added the breakdown as hard as it sounded originally when I wrote the parts. It's pretty straightforward. Like rhythmic, it, the main thing is that it's rhythmic, but overall it's not very fast or anything. The hardest part is probably the part before the breakdown, before the last chorus of the song, but tracking it really wasn't that bad. Yeah. Oh, we just recorded that. <laughs> 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 It's the only instrumental song on the album. 
and it's pretty energetic and kind of goofy sounding throughout. And it was kind of the first song with us kind of experimenting with some of the polyrhythms and metric modulation that kind of, I guess, threw us towards like writing crazier stuff. I'd say that the first EP was a lot more kind of straight ahead post-hardcore with some progressive moments in there like odd time signatures and stuff like that. This album is definitely far beyond that, I would say. There is some pretty intense heavy parts, intense fast parts, and then extreme progressive tangents that kind of go off completely out of left field. We definitely like feel that we need to step it up to an extent, whereas with Neutrino it was kind of like we were just going to record what the songs were and not really mess with anything that much. And I think that it's a cool step we're taking that's a lot different from Neutrino.